this is going to be less conceptual uh, than the material you covered in the first lab, uh, but it's much the same thing. There's not all that much to the basics of electrostatics. It's getting you intuitively used to thinking in terms of uh, charge and its motion. Uh, before we start with the lab, I want to take care of something. You're going to need a piece of software called Capstone. Capstone is a software by Pasco, which is uh, where we get most of our sensors. And Capstone is the uh, analysis software that we use for that data. So if you go to Pasco Capstone, I want to just go to Capstone. There, this is the page you'll see. And you'll click on Downloads. The first item is Pasco Capstone version 2.1. And if you then scroll down, you'll get a choice. This only works on Windows or uh, Mac computers. It won't work on a Chromebook uh, or a tablet or anything Android. Um, you'll choose which one uh, you need for your computer, and you'll download the free trial. The free trial works as well as any installation of Capstone. Uh, and many of you may have already um, installed it for summer or for um, last spring. But if not, click on the download free trial for your operating system and install the software. There should not be any problems. We've had none so far. However, after a time, I'm told that Capstone may ask for a product key. And we own a product key. Uh, so if you have that problem, contact me and we'll make arrangements for you to get the key so that you can enter it and use the software. Um, you should be able to figure that out. When you do so, you see this. This is Capstone. Uh, I've hidden all the controls because you don't need them. Not for this lab anyway. The picture you're seeing is the equipment we're going to use for lab two. In the bottom left is the 850 interface, uh, which connects the sensors, in this case, the electroscope in the bottom center, to the uh, computer. And you'll see how I save the data. On the far right, is an ice pail, which is just an electromagnetic shield. Two concentric uh, sleeves of metal. Uh, we'll put a probe inside, and uh, it will tell us the, uh, the voltage of that probe on the electroscope. We'll be reading it in a capstone file. I'll go through that equipment again uh, as we go through each part of the lab. The data you will be getting is under potential data. Now, I've done the first one for you. This is procedure one, so it's in the corner. And um, I've inserted all the boxes. And in this case, I've actually put in a word of explanation. This is enough for procedure one uh, for the data, the analysis. Your conclusions are another question. You'll have to come up with those answers uh, on your own. But you can see that at time zero, the system was grounded. Everything was zero. There was no charge separation. I then rubbed the white probe and blue probe together using the triboelectric effect, as you know, and generated a charge separation. I inserted the, the white probe into the ice pail. The ice pail then reads that voltage. And I measured it using a highlighting box like that and got the mean 39.9 volts. You'll be required to do that from time to time. I then hold the probe there for a few seconds and let everything settle down. I then remove the probe and the voltage drops back to zero volts back to its equilibrium. I then inserted the, the blue probe. 
and the uh, voltage swung negative to minus 22.0 volts. I held it there for a few seconds, withdrew it, and the electrons rushed back into their original distribution, which was equilibrium of zero volts. At the end, I inserted both probes into the ice pail, but there was no visible effect. So that would be enough for the description part for your data analysis. You'll be asked to do a little bit more for the conclusions that you draw from it. And if you want to change to another data type, you use this icon, the little drive symbol. You click on that. A little arrow. There we go. The little arrow beside the drive symbol. I have it on procedure one. I want to now move to procedure 2A. And there I am. Here I've inserted the uh, uh, the annotations, but I haven't written the needed documentation, like what you have to figure out. And if you go through, you'll see that there's everything up there. It's 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, 4, and 5. And you'll have to do the similar thing to all of them in each case. Uh, once you've written it all out, you have it all nicely centered, take a screenshot and copy it into your report as data. And then you'll follow the Google Doc to complete the report. So now I'm going to actually show you how I, uh, uh, first I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about the ice pail, then I'm going to show you how I did procedure one. So stand by. Okay, so before we talk about the procedures, let's talk a little bit about the electroscope. The electroscope is a special meter. Um, a normal meter would drain the charge off before it could possibly read the uh, charge. So uh, this one has uh, got an exceptionally high impedance so that it can do so. There's a zero button, an on button, and a range selector. It is connected through these alligator clips to the cages. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to rub the probes together and the materials are chosen so that one is going to take electrons and the other is going to give up electrons, creating a charge separation through the triboelectric effect. And I'm going to insert it into the inner cage. The charge on there, let's pretend it's negative, will repel the electrons on the inside of the cage to the outside of the cage. Now the outside of the cage has a negative charge. So the inside of the inner charge will be positive and the outside will be negative and the electroscope is connected to that. So it's going to read the difference between those. So if it's a negative charge, it's going to read a negative voltage. If it's a positive charge, it's going to read a positive voltage. That's the way the electroscope works. Now, in the uh, first procedure, one of the things you're asked is which one of these is the positive, which one of these is the negative. From the data and an analysis, an analysis similar to what I just did, you should be able to work that without a problem. So now let me demonstrate the data in procedure one. You can see the data in the inset image. I rub them together. I insert the white, I remove the white, I insert the blue, I remove the blue, I insert them together. At no time am I touching anything inside the pail, and I remove them. Now, you should be able to look at the data. And since I've written the annotations in there as a sort of model for this experiment, uh, you should be able to figure out what's going on, how the electrons are moving, how the, the uh, charge separation evolves in time in response to what I do with the probes. And that's what you're going to be asked to do in uh, procedures two and three as well. That's procedure one. 
In a second, I'll show you procedure two. The second procedure is split up into two parts. I can't do it all at once, as I did, but this time it's a little complex. Um, so I'm going to show you procedure one, which uses the white probe, and procedure, sorry, that's 2A, and procedure 2B is the same procedure, but using the blue probe. And you'll see the difference when you're looking at the data. And if you look at the incident data, you'll see that this time I've actually given the annotation boxes, but I haven't actually written anything meaningful in them. That's for you to figure out. So for 2A, what I did was rub them together. Sorry. First, I zeroed everything. Hit zero on the electroscope. Bridged my hand across here to ground them together. And that's why it says zero. Everything is neutral. Now I rub them together. I insert the white one without touching anything. I hold it there for a second. And then I touch. Release. Hold it for a second. And then I remove it. Now, this is going to have a different appearance to the data from procedure one. And you're going to have to figure out what that is. Uh, procedure 2A, or 2B, is the same one using the blue one. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. I'm going to move on to procedure 3 now. Like procedure 2, procedure 3 is split up into two different uh, uh, parts, A and B. And the difference between them is in A, I use the white probe. In B, I use the blue probe. The difference in conceptually here is that this time, I'm, uh, whereas in the first two procedures, it always returned to zero, the equilibrium state, this time I'm going to leave a charge on the pail. So I start, I ground it, hit zero, Everything is neutral. I rub them together. I insert the probe without touching anything. I then bridge the two to neutralize it because I'm a ground. Remove my finger. Wait a second. And then I remove the probe. And that's all there is to procedure uh, 3A. 3B is exactly the same thing using the blue charge producer. You'll see the data in the capstone file. And now I'm going to move on to procedure four. In procedure four, uh, we're not using the uh, charge producers this time. We're going to use an electrostatic voltage source and a conductive sphere. So how do I measure a conductive sphere using the ice pail? Well, I can't do it directly, so I'm going to do it indirectly with this. This is a test probe. It's a conductor. So if I touch this, it shares the uh, uh, charge, and then I could measure this in the ice pail. In order to put a charge on this, I'm going to turn on my generator, I got a probe here that's plugged into a thousand volts and I'm simply going to touch it. And when I touch it, there's a charge now on that conduct on that conductive sphere. I'm going to touch it in a few places and measure them. Touch, insert. Touch, insert. Touch, insert. I'm then going to reverse the probe, put it inside, touch, withdraw, insert, and remove. In each case, I tried not to uh, touch anything on the ice pail to transfer a charge to it. That's why it returns to zero each time. Now, you will see in the inset the data. Uh, there's four readings there. You have to measure the values of those readings, and you have to draw some 
conclusions from it according to the Google Doc. And that's it for Procedure 4. Now I'm going to move to Procedure 5. In Procedure 5, we're going to use a conductive shape, not a sphere this time. The, this rounded part is the same size, uh, but this has much greater curvature on this end. And it's the same procedure. I turn on the voltage source, I touch it, it adds charge to this, the charge is distributed, and now I test. I test this end, I insert. I take it out, I test this end, and I insert. And I take it out. Again, not touching the inside of the pail. That gives you two different um, readings, which you have to measure and explain. And that's it for the data collection for the lab. Everything else you need is in the Google Doc. Good luck.